get started here. Thanks so much for coming to this session. This is Minecraft and QIP, but this is obviously our unique story of using Minecraft in our school. You can obviously take pieces from it and think about what you can do in your school. My name is Colin Gallagher. I'm the IT facilitator at ISS International School in Singapore. My name is Sharon Sturdick, and I teach grade 3 at ISS in Singapore. So we hope that you know, you come away from this with a few more little nuggets of information, whether you want to do it or whether you've decided, eh, it's a bit too much for me. So uh, we'll get cracking and we'll just start with an overview of what we're going to try and get through. Uh, feel free to just to chip in at any point and we'll see where it, where it takes us. Okay, so as you can see, we've got a couple of pages to go through. All right, so first question is, a lot of people may not have seen Minecraft, a lot of people may not have um, even played Minecraft, or you might be using it now with your students. We'd just like you to um, look at what our students... I shouldn't have that. <laughs> Sorry. Oh yeah, you said something mentioned me. That's cool. <laughs> Thanks. So um, we went around the last few weeks and we asked our students to fi finish the sentence Minecraft is to see what they came up with. So let's play this. <clears throat> A game where you build houses and you build a, you can build a town or a city. Is a great way to to to, to use your imagination to build things. Minecraft is a world of blocks, and the owner is from Sweden. A world that you can make things and go places, and you make houses, and you can make buildings, and you go on adventures and see things and fly. Minecraft is some, some a very fun game that you can build. It lets you build your own houses. Good way to express how you feel and feel good is um uh, I love Minecraft because you got to like um, make zoos and make everything and make it feel like a community. You would keep on going and never stop. Minecraft is a game of creativity which you can build and then express your creativity. Computer game and it's made out of blocks. You can make lots of things from it, like train stations and buildings and tall towers. You can also make things in midair. Minecraft is a world made out of blocks, and then if you're only creative, you have your you're basically able to do anything you want. But if you're on survival, you have to uh, survive, get, get wood, and get a weapon, and try to survive the light. Minecraft is fun, but when you start playing Minecraft the first time, it's kind of hard to find all the blocks and lands and locals. Um, shoot the big 
go there and he can sleep and wake up in the bed. And there's a, in night there's a monster. The monsters are coming to your house. Minecraft is fun. Minecraft is a game that's made by blocks. Uh, you can build everything you want. So, as you can see, every student pretty much has a different answer for it, but there's a kind of a common, common theme, it's building blocks. And so when somebody asks me what Minecraft is, I usually say what Rob said in his workshop, it's like the Lego of our generation, it's on a computer screen. Um, so, if you've never seen it before, we'll show actual creations in it later on in our slideshow. I'm just going to talk a little bit now about um, the actual units of inquiry. As I said before, it was under the transdisciplinary theme of how we organize ourselves. So, if you could just, um, I'll just go one more slide. In the unit of inquiry, we really are looking to establish units that are engaging for students, that are relevant, uh, significant, and even challenging. And Upon doing this unit for the first time this year, I can say it really fit all of those areas. Um, a lot of our students already knew Minecraft, um, and they had maybe played it before at home. It was really relevant to them. Uh, they were excited. Even those new to it were very engaged. Uh, and so we found that this actually uh, really fit the criteria of, of having an effective unit of inquiry. Uh, when I have a peer concept driven, um, in the PYP, students are exposed to these concepts. Um, they explore them and they re-explore them every year. So they really get to know these concepts that I'm going to share which ones we used and which ones we focused on in this unit. Uh, this unit actually focused through function, how things work, connection, how things are connected, as well as causation. So consequences of certain things happening. And we really have these um, concepts driving our unit through the students' interaction in Minecraft. Another big part of this unit for us were the transdisciplinary themes. And for us, especially in this unit, we wanted our students to develop social skills as well as self-management skills. So in terms of social skills, we were looking at cooperation, group decision making. They were one class working together and they really had to discuss a lot together and cooperate with each other. Uh, there is also self-management skills involved here. Time management was a big one, as well as keeping themselves organized. So for grade three, a lot of times this can be quite challenging. Uh, and so this was something that really helped them develop in this unit. The next couple slides are just some snapshots from our planning of this unit. So um, our PYP planner here, the transdisciplinary theme you can see at the very top, how we organize ourselves. What you see highlighted in red is our initial focus in including Minecraft into this unit. So we were looking at the interconnectedness of human-made systems in communities, how they function, and how there are decisions made within that community. And that was that cooperation part of students working together. Uh, central idea, communities can function because of the systems within them. So over here you can see our conceptual related concepts. Systems was where we really started with the students. And I'll just share a little background with you also about how we tune them into that idea about systems and what they already knew about systems. So through the uh, initial stages of planning, we did start out by, as you should, checking in students' prior knowledge. And so we did ask them what they already knew about systems. And a lot of them shared systems, and, if we, and I'll show you just in a minute a quick uh, just a quick review of what some of them, their ideas about systems were, because a lot of them had systems that were built upon parts. So the photo, um, photosynthesis, for one, was a student explaining how that system works, parts working together. Another student talked about a flashlight and how you need a battery, you need a spring, you put them together, and that makes the system work. So we really started from what they knew about systems. We then expanded that into first uh, locally where they are in school, what systems are in place in a school setting, and then we took that further out into the community and what systems are working in uh, their community that they're living in. Uh, the next slide, I think, was just a quick uh, share about how we took their prior knowledge and each of them... Oh. Well, that's okay. Um, I, I, and I mentioned that 
at a lot of the students um, to explain to us what they knew about systems, they either drew something or they wrote a description. We put them into a voice thread so the students could actually verbalize, record over their pictures what their understanding of different systems were. And that's, again, just kind of where we started with their knowledge of that. Um, the following pictures are just some brainstorming that we did with students. After we got through the initial stage of systems that they knew about, systems in the school that worked together, and then we further went into the communities that they live in. They began to talk about what needs to be there. What do people who live in these systems, what they need, what do they want, and how that really helps develop certain things that show up in a community. So the next two slides as well, they were just the students brainstorming based on what humans in these systems need and want, what kind of systems appear from that. And so we kind of delved them in deeper looking at those areas as well. And they just kind of started brainstorming from there. Uh, this particular slide, I know it's very rough footage, but uh, we don't put up the central ideas at the beginning of our units. And as the unit uh, continues to move on, the students brainstorm a lot of words that they think are very important in the unit and where they think the unit is going so that they eventually can come up with a, a statement for themselves that's a really big understanding of the unit. Uh, this is just a very short video clip. And we may need you to go this pop Can I draw a Can I draw a Yay! I'm just trying to find you. What we're um, looking at is a very large uh, piece of paper that eventually the stage that we got to was the students were developing a community themselves. So each grade three classroom decided what, based on what they knew needed to be in a community, how those systems that they wanted in a community would function together, work together, why they needed to be there, and what would happen if they were not in their community. That's a paper pencil, a uh, very straightforward community being built within each grade three classroom. So this is where their initial planning started. All right, so to set up the whole kind of thinking and make sure actually Minecraft worked in our school, we had a Minecraft ECA after school club, um, first of all. So I think a lot of schools do this first to test the waters um, to actually make sure it actually works, make sure your connection to whatever server you're, you're planning on connecting to actually works. So um, this time last year, we started an ECA for Minecraft and we just, we had a blog, we made videos and students recorded their voices over what they were doing. Um, and we pretty much just test, tested the waters and, and, and made sure that everything would work properly on campus and uh, the kids see what the kids would say about accessing it from home and stuff like that. So um, it was pretty, I think it was pretty meaningful to, to do that and it kind of gave us a few um, little bits of tips and tricks to, to actually do it for the curriculum part this year. So it was pretty pretty good to do and we're going to start it again next week actually with the, the new ECA so we'll be adding more stuff to that weekly blog there. So it's, it's a fun, it's a fun ECA. So you want to talk about the email to the parent, or to the communication to the parents? Yeah, before we actually started this unit, um, before we do any unit, we do communicate with the parents where we're heading into our next unit of inquiry and what we plan on doing. Uh, in particularly, this was an important one to really communicate with the parents because we were going to be asking the students to go on to the server for their class's Minecraft community at home. Um, and we knew previously that we had some parent concerns about already many things that we were asking their students to do online at home before. So it was really getting the parents to understand this, um, this way, this lead that we were taking in this unit. and. Uh, how valuable we thought it was going to be for the students to, to make sure that they understood where we were going. So we did email the parents. We sent them a lot of videos on how to do things at home so they were very clear about it. And as well that we also told them, you know, please don't listen to uh, Chin Ho when he comes home and says, oh, Ms. Curtis said I have to be on Minecraft for an hour tonight because that wasn't our expectation either. So we did have limits for how much time they should be spending at home. Um, just meetings with administration. Um, just to let them know that this is a computer game, if they've never heard of it before, it was good to, to obviously to let the principal and the vice principal know what was actually going on specifically in this unit of inquiry. So if parents came in talking about 
their children playing video games at home, they're actually keyed in, they know what's going on, so they can say, that's for this, for that, it's purely educational. So it's just um, it's important to keep everybody in the, in the loop as we go along. Because there are connotations with video games. There are, so yeah. Did you guys get any pushback from parents at all? Anybody we, responded negatively? We didn't, we didn't. Our school is pretty, we've got 339 students. It's pretty small, and I think we've got a good, tight-knit community. Um, the parents kind of trust, trust the teachers. Um, yeah, like you said this morning, the parents do come up to me and go, oh yeah, you're the one who introduced Minecraft. <laughs> you're the one. So, yeah. But no, thankfully, no. All right, let's get into the techie bits. This is what we've done in our school. Um, this is what we've done in our school. We haven't posted it ourselves. We haven't posted the world. So basically, we wanted three separate worlds where our three grade three classes could go in separately so they didn't kind of intermingle with each other each class had a separate world to go into so they could all work together to build a world so redstone host and um, that's what chatsworth uses as well it's um it's a company based in, in america i think um contact them you go to their support page you register an account and you say i'm a teacher give me a free server but in a polite way and ask them that um, and say, and then they'll get back to you and say, give me a scan of your teacher ID and we're all set to go. And that's pretty much what happened. Um, I ordered a, one server from them last year for the ECA. This year for this thing, I asked for two more. Not a problem, did it. Um, I had one, I was talking to somebody from Hong Kong there, um, and he said they never got back to they never got back to them after they requested a server. Um, they, they're a bit tardy sometimes with support tickets. I don't know, Rob, your experience with them. A bit tardy, but I got the servers really quickly. So, free for educators. I don't know what we'll do if they go under. I'm sure there's other companies that will step in there. Um, but they've worked so far for us, and it's a great way just to start off without you having to worry about actually getting into your server and hosting stuff and installing stuff. Oh, right. Yeah. So, you, you can self-host it? Yeah, yeah. So, what's the options for that? <clears throat> I don't know. I've never done it. Um, Rob, did, have you done it? Yeah, we had over running on one of our so we just need some space. And you just yeah. have to, you just have, there's like a server that you can just download off of Minecraft and just install it on your server, and then yeah. there's needs like a back end panel. But um, to 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 do it with Redstone, it was a lot easier, and they they made it more bandwidth than we could offer. I think the big thing we, right now we have a local install of Minecraft Head U that we can have up to 100 kids in. Um, we've never had more than 35. But uh, the disadvantage is opening that up so the kids can play at home would significantly kill our bandwidth. And I live in Vietnam, so we're already struggling for, for bandwidth. So that hasn't been ever a choice. But hearing about Redstone, I mean, I'm yeah. really interested in that. Yeah. Actually, you know. It's, you know, you're not going to lose anything by contacting them and seeing how it works. Um, I've had little issues with them. Sorry, yeah? Can you back up from Redstone? So you have done a lot of work. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, you can, you can basically, I'll show you now if you go on one side. When you, um, actually, I'll talk about Minecraft Edge. Oh, one of the slides says about Minecraft Edge. Thanks. Um, so, we have your worlds. You need Minecraft accounts for your students, basically. So, Minecraft EDU was set up by um, the Minecraft teacher, Joel Levin in America. Um, it's the easiest way to get cheaper Minecraft accounts. It's a little bit off the, the regular price for a Minecraft account. So, we bought two sets of 25 game accounts for 335 US dollars and 25 game licenses. Um, yeah, simple. They basically just you pay for it and then you, they send you um, codes. It's kind of laborious. You have to go to their website, register an account, then create a username in there. And it's kind of, it takes a few steps and it took me a while to get all the grade 3 students in there. I just used, ran, I found this random fantasy name generator online. You just type, click and it randomly kind of gives a weird World of Warcraft type name, so it's kind of, it so works they, for them. They started trying to sign their papers in the classroom with that name. <laughs> and I didn't, didn't memorize them all, so I didn't. So we got a server, um, we have our accounts, and you're pretty much ready to go. So when you actually get in, and you have your Minecraft server, you have the actual admin area, and this is where you can back up your world locally to your computers or wherever, whatever. <coughs> So this area is where you set up your world, set up the parameters, it will change 
I know one teacher who allows monsters because it challenges the kids to kind of repel them or whatever. But for our situation, I kind of made it all no kind of things happening. No, um, there is animals, there's no monsters, no hardcore mode. You know, be crazy um, because when they die, they're gone, and that's it. Um, the game mode is creative, so you can have creative or survival. This was creative because we didn't that was the basic premise of the, of the unit required is to create something. Um, and the game does really easy. So this is, where, this is just the area, but then you kind of got to learn where things are. It kind of takes a bit of time to, to, to figure out where our stuff goes. Move on. <coughs> One other thing that changes with everybody's setup is the plugins that you put into the world. So the plugins kind of <coughs> change little bits of your environment in Minecraft suit what you need. These are the ones I use because these are the ones that suited us. Um, Kickfast um, was is disabling flint and steel um, because that starts fires. And we didn't want fires spreading because we wanted this utopian society where we just <laughs> created stuff and nothing bad happened. So flint and steel was disabled. Bad potion. I installed that a week into our unit of inquiry because as students do, they figured out the potions, they knew all about potions, they made themselves invisible and started <laughs> acting around. And so that was a bit silly. So I found that bad potion, that's a lot. Core Protect is a fantastic tool for dealing with students who kind of want to test the boundaries a little bit by griefing, by destroying other people's work. Core Protect, well basically there's no Installation of a database or anything, which a lot of these um, plugins will have, basically just records who puts which blocks where, basically, in, in, in essence. So if you go to a hole in someone's house and you right click it on it as an administrator, you say that block was removed by such and such at 10.55 p.m. on Wednesday. So you kind of got, you cover yourself a little bit there. Freeze time, it's kind of, it's weird, but I kept, I, I installed it because. I wanted permanent daylight so that the kids could build whatever they want. So it kind of freezes the sun. If you look up into the sky, the sun is kind of going like that because it's it's frozen in time. Um, quick impact is just stop lava. Lava, of course, is destructive. And if students have buckets of lava, they can just pour them everywhere and things get bad really quickly. Yeah, I mean, you can see a lot of these things too. If you change the direction of your unit, because even in how we organize ourselves, there's a grade four class that does their res how they organize themselves in response to a crisis. Right. So even if you were changing the direction of your unit of inquiry, you could then change how you're implementing which of these yeah. aspects of Minecraft as well, which that was not our focus in grade three. Yeah. So stop lab and TNT. TNT can cause damage. Time weather control, sometimes we didn't want to have rain pouring down because it darkens everything. So building was a key point. All the time day was just another time thing. So it just, they may not even be applicable to your situation if you needed them. So yeah, move on. <coughs> so, um, maps. When you open up a normal Minecraft world, it's hilly, mountainous, ravines, everything you can think of in a, in a, in a biome. We wanted a flat map so kids could not worry about filling in holes and putting up, uh, getting traversing mountains and everything. So I found a map, that's the URL there, um, that was flat basically. So when the students logged in, came into the world, it was completely flat. So that worked perfectly. Um, I think we would have been a bit stuck for time if we had to tell the kids, all right, you're going to have to flatten this mountainous area. In this over the next week. So this was really a godsend to us. There's a couple of animals, there's a couple of ponds, which they kind of filled in themselves. It didn't take a lot of time. On the short key, is that 6DB7I1 or L? You know what? That's the bad thing about those Google things. They always have zeros or O's. I don't know. I think it's an L. Oh, well, sorry. <laughs> Whoever gets it first, <laughs> let everybody know. One's an L, one's an I. It's the yeah. font. Yeah, it's the font yeah. I used. It might be a one. Well, that's true. Yeah. Try it out so that people know what the, what the letter or number is. All right, so that's maps. So we could have got a map that had a big, massive tower in the middle. Some of these guys make these maps specifically for the outside community. All right, so we just mentioned this. 
it's important to send these tutorials home to parents because we did get one or two parents' emails saying, how do we join a server? Because a lot of these students play Minecraft at home, but have never been part of a communal server before. So I had to make two tutorials. Luckily, I have a Windows and a Mac machine at home, so I could do how to join a server on a Windows machine and how to join it on a Mac machine. It just looks different, but I wanted to cover all bases. So um, it was important to do that because there's a couple of steps involved that students um, may not have experienced before, so um, we just kind of had to do that. It was, it was good to do. I think the parents appreciated it too. <clears throat> Alright, this is kind of like um, the first session with the students. We've got all the techie bits sorted out, we have our map sorted, the world is ready for them to step into. So we had a little session with them. Um, we had a little, very short presentation. I would say 80% to 90% of students have played it already. I think more so boys than girls, which is great because when girls start, start playing it then they start loving it and it's good to get the, the gender balance there. So we had a little short presentation with very short amount of rules because we wanted them to kind of, you know, learn as they go along. We had a little control printout. We had the printout for a couple of students who had never played it before um, because it's kind of hard and then as well we have MacBooks, so it's kind of different when you don't have a mouse as well. The trackpad acts a little bit differently. So we printed those out for the students that needed them. Now, do you want to add anything to that? that was... No, I mean, I think, you know, and even for me, I mean, I'm not a gamer. So, and you know, I think it was great because I got to go on this journey with my students, well, the ones who hadn't played before, and they saw me as well trying to navigate myself because I was in the world as well, and I was a part of it. And so, even for me, I think with the students, it didn't take us more than a couple times into there, and they were they were set. And you know, a couple of them kept that with them just in case they, you know, forgot something. But a lot of them really, it, most of them, it didn't take that long to get used to it. <laughs> so if I kind of take you back now to to our unit of inquiry, um, and again, you know along the way, always checking in with our students. This was a big part for us because, as I said before, you know, this was a, a new unit for us to do this year. What we did was, in each classroom, the students <coughs> generated their own, you uh, call it checklist for themselves, to help monitor their progress, their participation in their community, in their class community. So. They came up with things that they wanted to make sure that they were checking on after every time that they were in their world, something that they could self-reflect on. And that was really important because we wanted to make sure, again, if I go back to those transdisciplinary skills or even the PYP profile or attitudes, being tolerant of other people in the world. And creativity was a huge one, but to have them reflect upon that themselves was really important for their own learning and to know how they were working in that community. We also, in the classroom, while they were working together in the community, we would record those sessions um, with the quick, um, quick time, I think I was, using, yeah. I was using. So it would record the whole session of them working together, building, if someone was fooling around, that got recorded, and we would watch that back in the classroom together. And we would have our checklist, and we would talk about, you know, what's going on back there in the corner? Someone mysteriously has a sword out. We don't need that. So we would be able to watch those recordings and say, you know, what was going on today? What was our goal today? Today's goal, you were supposed to finish your MRT station. Did that get done? Why not? Were we not communicating with each other? Were we not cooperating? So that was another part, that regular, constant feedback, not only from each other, but on themselves as well, which is hugely important for the students. It's never going to change. Boys will always want swords in their hands. <laughs> In our unit of inquiry, so throughout the unit, they were formatively checking in on themselves. They were building this community, but at the at the end of the unit, and we, you know the students never wanted it to end, but because we did have to come to to something, we wanted the students to go back to those concepts that were driving our unit. So after their community was built, they would then record themselves in Minecraft, giving a tour of the parts that they participated in. And they would be talking to the recording about 
how their system that they implemented in the community functioned. How did it work? They also needed to touch on the connectedness between other systems that were connected to the one that they were sort of in charge of, or the one that they spent a lot of time building. Uh, causation as well. We talked a lot about through the process of building our community. Well, we checked in and we said, well, you restore. So then someone said, well, we could always build a farm. We could build somewhere we can grow our own food. So that idea, they were walking, giving a tour of their own community, and they had to talk us through the parts that they really participated in the most. So I think we have just a few clips melded together of a few students um, and what they're talking about. You might hear also, you know, in, in any international school, we have a lot of students who um, their English is quite limited, and you might hear them um, stumbling a little bit over their words, but you know, they, they were just so excited to share what they could do, and even, you know, getting, learning the controls and learning to speak about what they wanted to do, they were so excited, and yeah. just to hear their um, excitement about it. Is, yeah. The first student, she came last year to her school with zero English, so when she's recording her voice, she's trying to get everything sorted in her head, language, controlling, and it's just, it's, it's cute and she's a great student. Um, but I think she apologized. She apologized at some point. She's not doing And it was done with quick time recording, just on IMAX. Hello and welcome to our 3SS Community Systematicville. My name is Ryan, but you can just call me Clevis because that's my Minecraft screen name. I was responsible for the, the security system. So that means this fire station, the hospital, the dentist, and the police station. This is my post office. On the first floor, it's a bit plain. <laughs> and this is where they are. On the second floor, we have a waiting room. Here it says, please wait for your turn on that sign. And then uh, we have where you send your mail. It says Norway. Wait, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry, I can't get it. Uh, Norway, Africa, Sweden. Wait, Singapore. And this is Systematicville. Wait, what is this? Okay, so, um, Switzerland, England, America, and uh, lots of places. The third building that I built, I went more creative. And that is the dentist. I wanted to make it the shape of a tooth, so then it makes it better. And it's more obvious. So first you go in here. Normally there's no people. And then you go upstairs, tell the people what happened to your teeth. Then they would bring you to this room where they would repair your teeth. It is connected to the, others, the other security systems. If we didn't have a, a dentist here, all your teeth would be, if there was a problem, they would be quite rotten. This is uh, connected to the condos and the hotel and the houses, of course. If we didn't have an airport, the, the mail system will not work. These transdisciplinary skills I used on my post office to build. This post office, I used organization and uh, time management, and codes of behaviors. This is our community. Bye. <laughs>
So what the students would do in their portfolio is um, we would take certain recordings from different sessions and we would have the students embed those recordings into their portfolio. Attached to each of those recordings, they would also upload a rubric that we created together and they would assess the work of the classroom on that recording together on the rubric. So they had formatively going along as we were building the community, we would have the students embed certain days of the video recording into their blog, or excuse me, their portfolio, as well as the rubric. So each time they're stopping to also, the, the checklist was on themselves and the rubric as a community because that was the focus. What was their class doing in that recording? And so they would take the time to put those into their portfolio to have that reflection process as well. So it kind of dated from the bottom to the top. So that was the, the example, that, and that's the rubric that um, the teachers, as we were planning, we had some general uh, ideas at first, and then we showed the classes the rubric together, and we asked for their feedback too. Is this something that we think these are the parts that we really wanted to reflect on? And they had some ideas of things that they wanted to include and maybe thought was a better way to say something. So we're kind of, we're finished, we just finished it at Christmas, this unit, so it's pretty fresh in our mind still. So um, we just have a couple of, I have a couple of different things that I need to think about for, for next year. Um, the thing about um, Redstone hosts, I've, I have this issue, Rob doesn't, it's, it's, I think it's tied in with our bandwidth in our school. Um, but students can only log in one at a time to the world, it's kind of, it's not the end of the, the world. But um, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, but it's a bit, it's a bit of an annoyance. But it, it, it works out. It's fine. But I, I contacted Redstone Host and they said something about um, opening, um, doing something with a report or something. But we have to figure that out ourselves. It's not. It's it's, it's fine. Um, Minecraft updates. So Minecraft updates every couple of weeks, nearly. And so if your student at home updates their client, let's say the client software. And your Minecraft server, you haven't updated it yet. It's not going to. They're not going to be able to log into it, basically. So there's, you got to keep on top of um, your Minecraft server software and the updates for the Minecraft um, client. Um, flat map that we that I set up for the students. It was a flat map. We didn't do anything for them, but transferring the plan that we had on that big. Um, pink draft paper, well, it's kind of tough for them to kind of look at that and figure out where to go on this flat green expanse. So, yes, yeah, so in this one, and next time we do it, I think I'll make a square in the middle with kind of four points north, south, east, west, and we'll kind of have that on the plan, and then it will kind of be a lot easier for them to kind of transfer their thinking from the paper to the, to the screen. So it worked out okay, but there was a lot of kind of confusion about where stuff would go. So I'll, I'll do that differently next time. Oh yeah, so this is we talk about the So um, the last session we had together, uh, that was the last week that we were in session in December, um, we invited the parents in to come in and um, just have sit with their child, let them give them a tour. A lot of them have seen it obviously at home, but um, you know, some of them just wanted to show them a lot more of what else they did since the last time their parents saw. Some of them, some of them gave control to their mom or dad to have a go. A lot of them did not want to give up control. Um, but some of them tried to have their mom or dad build something while they were there. Uh, Our vice principal came in and destroyed some yeah. of the house. She apologized. <laughs> <laughs> this is um, over here is Aunt Drina, the girl that was showing us the post office. She's having her mom build a house. Mom was having her go. And, and you know, the feedback from parents, it was just, um, just really all positive. Um, really saw that, the, you know, the students weren't trying to stay on it all the time at home, but they would say, you know, I told Andrina I was going to help her finish that road, so if I just finish that, then I'll be done for today. So, you know, the, the parent feedback was that they were engaged when they were supposed to, and they didn't try to take advantage of, of being on it all, all the time at home, uh, because we obviously had sessions for them to be on at school. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, they do to get dizzy walking. <laughs> That's it, we're done. We kind of gone through that. Sorry about the um, technical issues. Thanks, to Michelle, for giving me. <laughs> we, we have a couple of blogs. Um, we, should, we need to update them more, like a lot of people. And we're on Twitter as well. Um, the presentation is at that. Sorry, there's another O or zero in there. They always throw them in. I think it's a big O. Um, yeah, so I'll leave that up. There's also a link for um, workshop feedback that we have to give at the end of this presentation. So I'll give you a minute to take your picture, Michelle, and then that's the feedback. So when that's up, anybody got any any points to make? Questions or? You just go back. To yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. Right beside it was our. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, how would the how many hours would you say you spent on the administrative side of initially setting it up? Actually, the longest was setting up the accounts. Once at Minecraft Edge, you sent me the 50 accounts. I think we only have 38 grade three students, but the setup was going through so many steps to get in. You have to log into Mojang.com first, set up a Mojang account now. Then you have to create the username, then create a password, and it took, yeah. Like, you know, I did it in an afternoon, let's say. Then the world, um, setting up the world is not that hard once you know what you want. So we had three worlds to set up, so I knew I wanted to create it, but it was Dropbox, as you saw. So that's maybe an hour at home after school. Um, so it's totally the map. They provide you with like a management console that you can put a CSV file up there and bulk create an account? No, no, they no. don't. I think they're, they're really just kind of started, kicked off last year, Minecraft Edge. So I think they'd be, they'd be open to feedback like that. Um, no, they don't. There's no kind of easy way for, for putting it in. And then something I didn't mention, um, on the admin side of things, there's a whitelist of usernames. So basically you can put, you put in then all your students' usernames and teacher usernames so only they can get into that server. And you'll see, actually, I don't know how people do this, but you'll see people trying to get into your server when you're online, but they get kicked because they're not the whitelist. So that's always important too, to kind of keep your whitelist kind of secure as well. So, that was, so yeah, but yeah, not, not, not too long. Once you get it done and you have your plugins installed that you know that you want, it's pretty much smooth sailing then. It's, 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 it's a fun thing to do. It's fun. Are those <coughs> per year? That's why I chose random fantasy names so that the students next year can use them again. So after, this was another time consuming thing, after our unit of inquiry ended, I had to go in and change all the usernames, the passwords for the usernames, so we can have <coughs> ones next year. So I won't have to do it next year, that's a good thing. But I have to do it after this, after this unit. So, yeah. Uh, we have a project that we're trying to do with 125 kids, and we're thinking of using one world. There, can you suggest maybe a possible way to zone so that they have a space to build so they're not interfering with others? <coughs> yeah, you could set it up. There may be a map out there that somebody has made already that basically segregates a world into segments. Is it the maximum numbers for redstone is 100? 100. 100. So for the maximum account you can get from a redstone host server is 100. So I think we're hosting our own. We're hosting our own. But it, yeah. it can't be it's 100 on the local from the end. We won't use it all at the same time, but yeah. yeah. But it can be done. There's a woman named Joe K. Is it Joe K? Yeah, like they did that. It's called Massively Minecraft, and they have hundreds and hundreds of users in this Minecraft world, and, and they they tiered it for somehow. But if you just look up Massively Minecraft and connect with her, she might be able to tell you how to do it. I've, I've never done it. I think there's a so solution out there for whatever you want to do in Minecraft. Yeah, I think much. within education, I think there's somebody has made something ready. Like I, on a chance, I thought that a flat map would have been good. I would have lived without it, but. Google it, flatten up Minecraft thing, it's there. It's fantastic, that works. Um, how much classroom time do you spend on the creating this world? I mean, was it something you did daily, a couple times a week? Yeah, we, d we didn't do it daily. Um, we have, at our school, we have a lab that we can book out, which would mean everyone can be on the computer at one time. And in the classroom, I have seven laptops where I could do half of them on and half of them off. So I would say the bookable lab, I would say we were in there maybe twice a week, sometimes three. And then in the class,
classroom, sharing um, half hour, maybe switch. Maybe I did that once a week. Okay. Yeah. I was a, I was a bit bit worried because I didn't know. Yeah, I mean the unit was the unit. This unit of inquiry was only six weeks, and so um, yeah, it was it was a lot. But I mean, it, it, I I think it, it turned out okay. I mean, I don't think we went we weren't on it all the time at all, even though they wanted to be. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. We also if they. Um, they had to communicate. That's this whole group decision skill make uh, in the social skills group decision making. If they talked to the class and they said, um, "Okay, you know, Tommy and I, we want to come up at lunch. Um, we'll finish the MRT if that's okay with everyone." And then the class would say, "Okay." So they gave up their recess and they came up at lunch to finish something. That would be okay. But it had to be a decision. They couldn't come up and say, "Well, I'm going to build a movie theater," not ask anybody. It was really important that they work together. And a percentage of them did. Go out, go on at home. Oh yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So they got stuff done then. I don't know what like percentage wise in your class went on at home. I mean, the, at some point they all did because I would go on at I would go on at home to see who was on and what they were doing. So right. <laughs> um, I would check on them, and at some point they all did, but not not a lot. One, two, three, four. Uh, two points for creating user accounts. You can also do something as simple as. Um, SSIS or whatever your local is, one, two, three. Some schools prefer that. Depends on your administrators. They may or may not like those kind of naming. Second thing, uh, Minecraft Edu actually has a lot of the capabilities, all those plugins. Right. It can do a lot of it. it has The first world it kicks you into is called Playground. You're in a flat world already. Um, it has, you can shut off PNT. You can shut off a lot of the things you mentioned yeah. through plugins. So if you're not a plugin person, and you have server space, and you want to create a local install, this would mean the kids couldn't do it at home, but they could do it in a school, in your class. Minecraft Edu might be a good option. Yeah. It's good for stars, it's good for younger, yeah. younger grades. Travis? So, um, you gave the kids access at home mm -hmm. to the server. Is there a way of turning the server on and off? There is. Yeah, so and you, you can, can actually have it get an on. app on your phone. You can, if you're out all the time, or whatever, oh, you need to turn it off, it's 11 o'clock. And turn it off for a moment. So you guys have no worries <laughs> about that. <laughs> no. I think the communication with parents work helped, you know, because they knew when the, the child should be on or off. Yeah. But yeah, MC, it's called MC My Admin, the, the back end of, of this server, and you can get an app and you can just see who's online, and then you can turn it off. The service is really good. When when they weren't being supervised with the children uh, messaging each other, did you yeah. that function? That was yeah. fine. You guys yeah. monitored it? You can you can get a chat log. I didn't actually install it actually, but right. you, I did for the ECA last year. You can get a chat log plugin, which will just save a text file to the server. Yeah, nice. and, you, and that's that's peace of mind too. Yeah. I didn't bother actually. They, I kind did, of, they did talk to each other. Yeah. It was either just say, "Come over, I'm over here, I'm waiting for you. You're supposed to be helping me." And it, it was, yeah, that was good. Yeah. I think we found in, I found in the ECA last year that kids who don't talk in class were talking at the storm on the text on the chat. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the That's, um, I've been messing around with something called MC Map Live, and uh, you, know, you know, I've done a lot of the world locally, so if I hosted it somewhere on Google Drive or whatever and said to the kids, hey, this is your world you, you worked in, you can, they, can, no, they can do whatever they want because they could put it onto their local computer at home and just mess around, and if they want to destroy it, they can do that because it's still on their local computer. I looked up, I was, I've worked with MC Map Live, it basically takes your saved file and turns it into 3D. Um, orthographic view of your world. It's for Mac only. There's a there's a Windows version, but um, it kind of saves if you have, if you have to kind of dump your save file. It kind of it's a bit of a memory thing. It, it just you can just look down on the time you've got this, it's, but it's not interactive or anything. It's just a graphic file. So at the end of the they haven't necessarily kept the They have all the recordings of themselves doing a tour, and as well as all the recordings I took. About 65 megabytes, I think, their world as it is, like as, as a save file, I think, 65. So, so I think I can, like, we're all on Google Drive, the kids, so I could just put it up on Google Drive and share it with them and say, download this at home if you want to go back into your world. Yeah. Okay. I apologize if you can make a language like reading and writing and mathematics that you use with the unit? Well, they throughout the unit.